Hey everyone, today I want to give you three tips on printing really large things on your 3D printers and the best part is this is really applicable to any of your FDM 3D printers that you might be working with. Today I'm going to be printing directly on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus and the Neptune 3 Max and these were both multi-day prints that I was able to run off and print on these large 3D printers. Now normally what I like to do is tease whatever it is that I'm printing and then show you the final print towards the end of the video. However, I want to show you the final versions of these prints all with the supports removed so that you can get an idea of the type of things that you'll be able to print with some of these tweaks to your 3D printers or even better yet your settings and that goes directly into the first one that I want to talk about which is adding a 0.6 millimeter nozzle to your larger 3d printers now I'm working with the Elegoo Neptune 3 plus and the Neptune 3 max however for whatever reason industry-wide the pretty much standard that you're going to receive with most of your 3d printers is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle which is perfectly fine and you're going to be able to get some great looking prints off of that however when it comes to printing larger things or just trying to max out the build volume of your 3d printer I would highly recommend putting on a 0.6 millimeter nozzle to your 3d printer or even trying out a 0.8 millimeter nozzle this is going to allow you to really speed up the things that you're trying to 3d print it's also going to make your prints a lot beefier and sturdier again depending on what kind of slicer settings that you're going to be working with and you still can produce some really clean looking 3d prints even by going up in nozzle size now you could just slap a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on your printer and use your existing slicer profiles and let it rip however I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you're probably not going to get the best results however with this second tip we're going to be using Prusa slicer and some functionality that they had baked into the slicer and basically use any printer profile with this upgraded nozzle with a few slicer setting tweaks. Now I first heard about this trick from a video from Wild Rose Builds where they took an existing Elegoo Neptune 3 Max and upgraded to an enlarger nozzle. So in this what you're going to end up doing is coming into your printer profile here in Prusa slicer and under the printer settings you're going to change it from a 0.4 to a 0.6 or a 0.8 whatever it is that you might be upgrading it to. Then under the layer height limits I've set those to zero. Then your attraction settings are going to vary depending on the machine that you're working with and you might have to play around with those but in the most part these are the settings that worked fairly well with me in PLA additionally under filament settings you'll probably want to bump up your temperature slightly again depending on the material that you're working with for PLA and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle I like to print at 220 and then the other layers at 218 then when it comes to your printer settings again you can still get away with printing at 0.2 layer height and getting some really fine detail prints or you can bump that all the way up to 2.8 or even 0.3 you could potentially even go higher if you really wanted to save even further on your print times I also like to set a slightly larger initial layer height for most of my prints and then for the perimeters I typically leave it at 2 since we're going to be using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and it's going to be printing some pretty thick lines for our prints and then for the top and bottom I'm usually around 3 to 5 for the top and 2 for the bottom and then when it comes to our infill I like to leave it really low so somewhere around five to eight percent infill again we're going to be extruding a ton of material so it's going to be nice thick and chunky the last setting that I wanted to call and again which is why I've switched over to Prusa slicer specifically their new alpha release is for those organic supports that's going to really help you cut down on the amount of material that you're using and the print time if you need to support things so enable organic supports and one additional step that I would recommend is down below there is an additional setting for tree support branch diameter you could want to consider bumping that up especially if you're printing really large objects you don't want really thin branches because it's going to be potential failure areas for your 3d prints and what makes this so great is that Prusa slicer is going to automate a lot of the functionality for us especially when it comes to speed and the extrusion information so what we can do is come in here and set all these values to zero and then underneath the max volumetric speed I typically set that to about 50 now and it seems to work out fairly well for me in these machines again a Prusa slicer seems like it's going to auto calculate some of that information for me and then under the advanced tab I can set all of the extrusion values to zero it's really wild it works fairly well here for these larger 3d prints and my print times are nice and quick for these large prints and a big thank you to wild rose builds for sharing this information because I had no idea and it's really cool 
And if you didn't wanna deal with any of what I just walked you through there and setting that up and wanted to download my profiles for the Elgoo Neptune 3 Plus or the Neptune 3 Max, you can check out my Patreon. I wanted to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content like this here on YouTube. One additional thing that I wanted to mention is since you are gonna be printing with that larger nozzle size, when it comes to things like supports, you are gonna be printing some beefier, tougher to remove supports in some cases. These prints right here, it was a little difficult getting some of these supports to pop off, so you might wanna further refine and test some of these before running off and running some really large prints. Overall, it wasn't too bad removing these. However, I did end up breaking the sword on this little miniature of myself here and ended up having to 3D glue it back together. Now, the last tip I have for you has to deal with the actual filament that you're gonna be using. When you're printing larger things, regardless of the print size of your 3D printer, well, I mean, the bigger the printer, the more likely the larger it is of uh, a an item that you're actually gonna be able to print and the more filament that you're gonna need. And the issue that I've run into time and time again is I do not want to end up running out of filament mid print and having to change things out, even when printers like the Neptune 3 Plus and the Neptune 3 Max have auto print resume and filament run out detection, all those sort of things. I don't wanna have to deal with that. So what I ended up doing ugh, that I've used in the past are these huge spools of filament that you can get from Ziltec and other manufacturers. And it is just a massive spool that you can try to get connected to your 3D printer. However, the challenge with working with these really large spools is getting them to reliably spin and pull into your 3D printer. Obviously, you can't top mount this here on top of one of these printers. It's just not gonna be able to support it. This thing weighs an absolute ton. It's like 10 pounds here. So I ended up buying Repcord's new rep box system here. This is a large spool holder system for these larger 3D printers that are gonna allow you to more easily spin and use these really large five pound or five kilogram rolls of filament on your 3D printers. And it worked amazing for this dice tower here. So this is basically a large drawer system for storing your larger rolls of filament or even smaller rolls of filament inside of a box here. If your printer is small enough, it will actually fit on the top of this. So the Neptune 3 Plus will actually perfectly fit on top of this rep box here. The Neptune 3 Max is just a good bit too large to fit on top of that. But Pooch over at Repcord has mentioned that he's gonna be looking into a way to actually make an extendable top for this that the Max could potentially sit on if people are interested in that. It would certainly make the entire print volume or uh, the, the, the volume of your 3D printer plus the box extremely tall. I mean, it's already pretty tall with the plus sitting on top of it, but it looks really cool that you can actually do that and it'll fit on it as well. The other thing that you might notice is that there is a tube on the back, a large PTFE tube on the back of the rep box that the filament's gonna run through. And this is where I had it feeding in over the top of the max and I zip tied it to the top of the handle here. I'm debating on making some sort of a 3D printable attachment. We'll then run through the filament runout sensor and go directly into the extruder here. Here you can see where I just had to move the printers around, so I snapped the filament off from the uh, from the printer itself. But the reason why I was so excited about buying the rep box so that I could use those larger Texas size spools of filament is because I have some huge projects that I'm gonna be starting on that are gonna require me to print for like five plus days here on the max. And again, I didn't wanna be having to deal with the potential of issues with the filament runout or just swapping it out and not having my printer actively printing overnight. I also wanna say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max and the Neptune 3 Plus, which I know a lot of you have been eager to get your hands on. And I've been told that they should have some of these back in stock before the end of the month here. And in fact, they gave out a little notification that the Neptune 3 Plus was available on their website. I don't know if it'll still be available over on there, but keep checking in. It seems like stock of these printers keeps coming back in every few days or so. So definitely check on there if you're interested in picking up one of these really large, awesome 3D printers that are fairly budget friendly. Now, one thing that you are gonna see from me in the next week or so are some really large prints coming off the Neptune 3 Max using either a 0.8 or 
one millimeter nozzle. I can't even believe I'm gonna be trying that out. It's gonna be using so much filament and I'm basically gonna be maximizing the entire build volume of this printer. It's gonna be stupidly large, stupidly large. But let me know what sort of tips that you might have with printing with large 3D printers. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Off Earth who uh, j just turned me on to printing with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle a handful of years ago on some of my other printers. And it's sort of been a big game changer for me, especially with some of the larger cosplay pieces that I like to run out and print like helmets or armor pieces. You really can't tell the difference between a 0.4 and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle when printing at a 0.2 layer height. And let me know if there are any tips that you have on printing really large things on your 3D printers that I didn't mention in today's video. Really interested to see what sort of tips you all might have. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time, bye now. Also, it's Pooches or Repcord here, his 50th birthday this week. So join me over on Twitter by wishing him a happy 50th birthday. He'll love that, he'll, <laughs> he'll love that.